testing one, two, testing one, two. Welcome to Area 6 Fall 2012 Speech Contest. Thank you for coming. We're going to have two exciting speech contests, and I will let our Toastmaster tell you everything about it. So I'd like to welcome up to the front distinguished Toastmaster, former past district governor, and former, I believe, international governor. No, but a lot of roles. Mr. Bob Roman. Last year's Human Speech uh, Contest winner. Toastmasters. Are you ready for a great contest evaluation in human? Just before we get started, as uh, Toastmaster I know says these weapons of mass uh, distraction, if we can turn them off or put them to vibrate, Better off turning them off because if you're in a humorous contest and the contestant is speaking and he sees you checking your email or sending out a text message, that should, it kind of would deflate the person. So, so because the all the contestants have worked hard to get to this level in Toastmasters, make sure that we give them our full attention in the evaluation contest and also our full attention and our laughter in the humorous speech contest. As I said, we're going to have the two contests. We will have the speech evaluation contest first and when that contest has concluded, we'll have a 10 minute break <coughs> and after the break, we'll conduct the humorous speech contest. There's a local rule in the library that they may do announcements and they can't close off the announcements that come to this room. So if you are speaking as an evaluation contestant or Toastmaster and a announcement comes over the loudspeaker, stop speaking. The timers will stop timing and will resume when the announcement is over. So, just, yes. Okay, just so that everybody's aware, this is gonna be taped for eventual distribution to the internet. If you do not wanna be on camera, let me know and I will turn it off. Otherwise, I'll be using this and probably after the conference, this contest will go up on online. Also, it, if it does go on sooner, it would only be available to people who attended the area contest right. here, not the whole district-wise. Right. And we have a number of dignitaries here, and I'd like to introduce them now. Our Lieutenant Governor of Marketing, Donna Weston. And we have John Lobby, the Northwest Division A Governor. And area governors, we have Dean Glasson, the A1 Area Governor. The A4 Area Governor, and I say that first because I don't want to uh, eggball Acha. That's right. Area 5 Area Governor, Christina Haras. And the Area 6 Governor, which is the Area 6 Contest, and we all know him, is Toastmaster Glenn Reed. And that, uh, the other dignitary,
Terry is myself, and that was past district governor, and this year I'm celebrating 25 years ago I was the district governor. Wow. wow. <laughs> the speaking order for the evaluation speech contest, number one, Valerie Buson. Number two, Diane Bolash. And I might as well announce to you the order of the humorous contest is number one, Tim Bolger, and number two, Stacy Latona. The contestants, the timers, the ballot counters, and sergeant arms have all been briefed prior to the contest to make sure that this contest is fair and to the rules of Toastmasters International. And that means that uh, no one should be entering or leaving the room while a contestant is speaking. If you happen to do that, we will be on recorded and uh, you'll be blackmailed from Toastmasters forever if that happens. So we don't want to do that. Uh, you may uh, do with a minute of silence, go out and do a bathroom break if you'd like, but if you happen to take a little bit longer and the minute is up and the contestant is speaking, you'd have to wait until that contestant is, is finished. So nothing further, if there's no other questions from our contestants, uh, let this contest begin. <clears throat> the test speaker is Nilo Ali. Her speech title is My Addictions. My Addictions, Nino Ali. Contest Chair, Mr. Toastmaster, and my dear fellow Toastmasters, I have a very addictive personality. I get addicted to the strangest, weirdest stuff. And it happens with the very things that put me off at first, like it was the Toastmasters. The first time I heard about Toastmasters, I was like, spare me the horror. Speaking in front of a crowd, that's not me. And my husband says to me, joining a Toastmasters club will not make you a good speaker. Any more than standing in the garage will make you a car. <laughs> I'm glad you get his humor because I don't. I came to a Toastmasters meeting against my better judgment. And um, the first thing that I noticed that alarmed me was the way people introduced each other to me. This is Linda Toastmaster. This is Sue Toastmaster. This is Tim Toastmaster. I'm like, wait a minute here. I do not want to change my last name. <laughs> you see, unlike you, I had to work really, really hard for my last name. And the only reason I think I married my husband was because of his short name. <laughs> and I was not going to change that. If you meet him, don't tell him because he doesn't know that. <laughs> but, and um, I was at the meeting. And I saw people up and come up and give speeches one after another and after another. The theme that day was how Toastmasters helped them. So there they were coming up and saying how Toastmasters changed their life, how much fun they had at Toastmasters, and how good, good a time they were having at Toastmasters. And I'm sitting there thinking, if counting somebody's ums and ahs and correcting their grammar is the most fun you had in your lives, then there's something wrong with your life. But then, um, I got addicted with the very first speech that I gave. And um, after that, I felt compelled to go there every th other Thursday and give a speech. 
I became so addicted that when there was no uh, Toastmasters Club meeting scheduled, I would go to my backyard and give my speech to a bunch of roses. <laughs> and my husband tells me that even when I talk in my sleep, I use voice variation. <laughs> now I come to the part where Toastmasters messed me up. And it is all because of our friend Tim, right here, who videotapes our speeches and emails them to us. And um, the first time I saw myself giving a speech, I was horrified. I had <coughs> such messy hair. <laughs> and nobody mentioned this to me, ever. And I am sitting there thinking, how can anybody concentrate on my speeches when my hair is so messed up? I said, never mind. I'm going to rectify this right away. So I went back home. I worked on my speech, but I worked harder on my hair. <laughs> and two weeks later, I was back. There I was. I had perfect hair. I was giving a confident speech. And I was very happy with myself. And then came the evaluators, one after another after another. And they told me how good I was. They also told me how I needed to improve. And I'm like, how I needed to improve? What could they be talking about? I had perfect hair. <laughs> <laughs> then I went back home. I was furious. I thought, I have to change this. I said, forget about the speech. Just concentrate on the hair. Two weeks later, I was back giving a speech. And I said, as I was giving my speech, a thought suddenly occurred to me. You know, it's not my fault that people are not noticing my hair. It's the Toastmaster's fault. You guys have very bad eyesight. Look at how many of you are wearing glasses today. <laughs> I said, I give up. Forget about pleasing Toastmasters. Forget about it. But then it started seeping into other areas of my life. I started noticing everybody else's hair. I could not concentrate on anybody's speeches. I could just, I was just looking at their hair. <laughs> and I thought if I were ever a judge at a speech contest, the only thing I would look for is hair. If the hair is good, the speech is fantastic. If the hair is bad, forget about it. And Tim, your speech was great. It had great humor, you had a great delivery, everything. But your hair, Messed up. <laughs> You're disqualified. <laughs> before I go, I have to tell you about a dream that I had. No, Dean, it's not that kind of a dream. I had a dream that I came here and I gave a good speech and it made you laugh. And I th I'm glad that it kind of came true, but it didn't come true exactly the way I dreamed. For one, you all are fully dressed. <laughs> and for another, I look way better in my dream than I did in reality. Thank you. Well, the Sergeant in Arms escort the two evaluation contests members out of the room and once they have left the room uh, timers we time uh, five minutes So let's uh, get a chance to know our, our guest speaker, Nilo Holly. Holly, if you want to come up here.
Now that you joined Toastmasters, what was the most pleasant surprise about Toastmasters that you didn't know before? Um, the things that I didn't know before. How, um, I thought it would take me years and years to actually come up here and actually give a speech. But uh, it, the people that were with me, they, they were so encouraging and so nice that I was right away giving speeches and here I am as a target speaker. Like, just like, four, this is my third speech. So although I'm, I'm very nervous, but I'm still coming here and giving speeches. That was something that I never thought. I know, if someone asked me on my fourth speech when I first joined Toastmasters, I would tell them, are you, are you kidding? <laughs> I wouldn't do that. But. And you're with the Fox Valley Toastmasters Club? And, we, and you live in Huntley, Illinois. That's a far piece to come in all the way down to Arlington Heights to do that. So, so what does your husband think about your speaking skills now that after you've joined Toastmasters? He's very impressed. He's impressed now. Has he ever thought about uh, joining Toastmasters? No. <laughs> uh, another plug right. here, twice as nice Toastmasters as a couples club. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> an opportunity to get, get that stray Toastmaster, the Toastmaster to be involved in a club. And we only do that once a month. We also have a dinner beforehand. Oh, wow. So. And uh, your notable accomplishment, you like volunteering, but why don't you tell the audience where you like volunteering? Um, I volunteer at um, hospice in a nursing home. It's in Woodstock. And I've been doing that for a few years, and I really love it. It's very my time. Your, your interest in reading books, what's, uh, what's a good book uh, lately? And did you read it paper, or did you read it on a the tablet. I, I prefer going to the library. So when they said the contest is in the library, I just jumped. <laughs> yes, I, the last book that I read was Night by Eli Wiesel. That's a um, book by a um, Jewish person who wrote about what all they went through in a night. So, so well, if you wanted to relax when you're reading a book. What kind of books would you be reading? I want to. Any book I think would just relax me because I just find it very, even, very comforting. Even a horror book? Any book. Horror books, <laughs> and zombies and any, stuff like that that would relax you? Yeah. I wouldn't be able to go to sleep after reading a book like that. <laughs> and your occupation is a business banker. Isn't that a hard occupation to be in these days? I would say no. <laughs> Why not? Because uh, it's, it's the way of you approach your work, I think. Um, any job could be as fun or as dull as you want it to be. It's basically what you are bringing to the job. So I, I say I love my job, I do. And I enjoy it. Well, it shows on your demeanor, and she does have an addictive personality, doesn't she? Yes. yes. Well, on behalf of the Area 6 Toastmasters, congratulations for Thank being you. our Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds to go. Can we do a quick plug for the conference? The Northwest Division contest in thirty seconds. I've got three seconds. Northwest Division contest Saturday afternoon, September 29th, three p.m. Harper College room Z102. See you there. And there's also flyers on the back that have that information also. Our first evaluation contest person, Valerie Fusen, Valerie Fusen.
thing I like about Toastmasters is that we have a great opportunity to listen to other people's stories. And I really appreciate the stories you gave us today. Nilio? Nilio. Nilio. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. Great stories. I really loved the way you started with your speech. You look very confident. You used a lot of humor. I was surprised at how much humor you used it. You used it all the way through your speech. Your organization was wonderful. You started with how much you needed Toastmasters. You thought it was addictive. And then you went on and talked about the your growth through it, how you started it, how you were afraid of it. And then you went in how you became addicted to it. So it really carried us through your experience with Toastmasters. And I really like that. The stories that you used with your husband and about the car and Toastmasters. You know, just joining Toastmasters doesn't mean you're going to be a better speaker. So you had lots of great humor in there. And then the, the count, counting the ums and ahs, having fun. We have fun doing that, don't we? <laughs> it is. And from some of the long, we have a lot of long Toastmasters in here. You can see that, yes, we do have fun here, and it is addictive because we keep coming back to be evaluated. The evaluation process is to help us grow as speakers. And I'm going to give you two suggestions and just about some of the things that I really liked. Uh, you have a great smile, great personality up here. I really, it really drew me into you. And the the message is that when you we know we need Toastmasters, we know we need to improve our speeches. And it's a matter of do we get into it? And once we do, once we get started, it becomes part of us because we see the growth, we see the fun that we're having here. And Elio, you did a great job in letting us know about that. The, con the conclusion, I thought, is where you could improve. You had great organization, great humor. But the conclusion, you actually just you brought in another story, another humor. And so I think you're concentrating maybe on humor rather than the message. And I think at the very end, you had an opportunity to give us the message again and tie in the addiction again. Possibly, the, the, maybe how, how you're going to become more addicted as you go through the process, maybe in, into your, your other speeches. So, uh, and then also more vocal variety. I think you could have used a little fear when you first started and then just excitement when you're being evaluated. Because evaluation is, is just something that you really, really enjoy. You have fun. So in summary, I love your stories, your humor, and just have a stronger conclusion and tie in the beginning. Nelio, it's just master. We'll have one minute of silence for the judges to mark their ballots. Does any judge need additional time? Raise your hand. Our second evaluation contest contestant, Diane Bolish. Diane Bolish, our second evaluation contest. Mr. 
Mr. Chairman, fellow Toastmasters, and most especially you. My absolute applaud to you. What tenacity to Shay to come up in this environment in front of Toastmasters that you've never met and share so deeply a personal <coughs> issue as an addiction. I would like to use touche as to organize my comments. First, your topic, the T, was perfect for this environment as we all have been through those first early Toastmasters days. You're, you were organized in sharing your approach to Toastmasters. I would have liked a little bit more frame of reference about how long has it taken you to develop this addiction? How long have you been working on it? And is it recent or has it been over the last several years? I was a little confused there, but otherwise following along in your timeline about how you've evolved to be addicted to both hair and Toastmasters. <laughs> the you in Touche is unique. You have a very unique perspective and a sense of humor about your relationship with Toastmasters, and I was privileged to share that with you. And I think that relying on your common and understanding our common experiences really gave your speech uh, a floor here, a real sense of substance for all of us to share with you. The C and Touche represents your comfortable style. You are very comfortable with your presentation skills and very comfortable to share who you are. Some of the things that we all in Toastmasters need to encourage is more eye contact and more time to really pull all of your thoughts together so that it's not a, a series of one-liners as entertaining as they are. H, I was tempted to say represented hair, but in this instance, it really represented your sense of humor and sharing it with us. And by the way, your hair is lovely tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and to Shay, the E represents your energy, your enthusiasm, and your excitement for not only Toastmasters, but sharing yourself. So I applaud you, and again, say to Shay for your performance here this evening, and encourage you to continue developing your hair and your Toastmastering <laughs> skills. Mr. Contest Chair. The judges will have as much time as they need to complete their ballots. Mr. Toastmaster, we have all the ballots. Seventeen years? Uh, a lot of years. 
And I was 12. 12 years. Five, five years. She started with 12. 12. Okay. Yeah, well, I started when I was 12, too. So. 32 years later. Also, tell us what club you're representing in this contest. I'm representing Top, uh, Toastmasters on Purpose, and we meet at Harvard College. We're an advanced club. What do you mean by advanced club? To join our club, you have to be have to have completed your 10 speeches via CTM. And I, what we do in our club is you, get, you really give extensive evaluations. You get four evaluators for each speech. So, and each one is two to three minutes. It's very thorough. But fun. It's addictive. It's fun. <laughs> <Yeah. It's addictive. laughs> Notable accomplishments that you performed uh, improv skits at Second City. How'd that go? It was very fun, addictive too. I had joined. I had wanted to do something different every year, and I wanted to learn something different. And I also wanted to improve my speaking skills, and I thought it would help me. So I joined Second City, and I took their year program, and we had to perform at on main stage in in the city twice. And it was so exciting when we went backstage because you, you saw all of the, the little cubby holes where people put their stuff. And, you, and we had the people were, you know, signatures on the wood. And you knew that the little sheets were there. And then, you know, all these other things, improv people. So for the advanced club, what's, what's the qualifications to become a member of the top Toastmasters? You have to like Toastmasters. <laughs> and just have completed your CTM, your 10 speeches. You mean your CC? Your CC. CC. What did I say? CTM, CTM, the old designation. The old designation. Well, that's because I've been around too long. <laughs> yeah, your CC, the competent communicator. And I see here you're one of your interests you listed as fashion design, so our uh, test speaker could uh, get some tips from you, huh? That was one of my other things that I did for a year. I took fashion design at Harvard College because I always wanted to do it. I used to sew a lot when I was <coughs> young, and I made my own wedding dress and my daughter's wedding dress. And so I took a year program, and I designed golf outfits that were on the runway. We had models for it, and it was just real, real fun. It was real exciting. Well, on behalf of the Toastmasters in the Northwest Area Sex Contest, thank you for competing. evaluation uh, contest was Diane Bolash. <clears throat> Diane, come on up. <clears throat> Diane, tell us what club uh, you're representing and how long you've been in Toastmasters. I am representing Mount Prospect Club 1500 and this time I've been in Toastmasters about two years. And in the early mid 90s, I was in a Toastmasters club in Michigan for about five. So, all together, whatever that adds up. So, what made you stop going to Toastmasters after five years and then rejoin F and rejoin? Well, I was living in Grand Rapids for a period of time when my father became ill. So, I moved to Illinois to care for dad, but I still had contracts there. So any time I might have spent in Toastmasters, I was in the car driving back and forth. So I took a, a few years off, and as soon as I could, I came back. You say your interests here are gardening and environmental issues. Do they go hand in hand? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love to put seeds in the ground and see what happens. It's always a miracle to find that things grow. And the more you're out there and you're growing things, you learn that everything is connected. So, you know, tonight the Sierra Club is doing a program about fracking, and I wanted to go there, but I couldn't do both. So I'm interested in all of those issues. I see your occupation is a consultant. What do you consult? Well, it depends on what your problems are. <laughs> uh, for 30 years, I work with deaf people. So I work in companies that have deaf employees, but I also help people write business plans and strategic plans for their companies to either grow their business or solve a problem. I see you didn't put on your 
your biographical information, the city in which you knew reside. I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> I am technically and currently homeless. I've just vacated my father's house because they're settling the estate, and I haven't found a new place, so I'm sort of what I'm doing what I'm calling my gypsy adventure. <laughs> Luckily, I have friends who love me enough to let me crash with them until this you know, settles out in the next couple of weeks. Well, on behalf of the Toastmasters in the Northwest Area 6, again, thank you for being here. We will adjourn this meeting for 10 minutes and we will get ready for a rip roar and humorous speech contest.